Hello everyone, we're going to create an offline first and installable web application using SvelteKit and Workbox Precaching. We're going to be building a progressive web app. That means we're going to use some browser features to give our app native app-like behavior. We're going to be building the web app to be installable as a standalone application in the operating system. And we're going to make the app offline first. So even without a network connection, the user can use the app. To create this app, we're going to need two parts. So we're going to create a web app manifest, which provides meta information on the application. And we're also going to be building a service worker, which is basically a proxy that sits between the web application and the network. And today we're going to intercept requests and serve cached content for offline use. First, we're going to create a new SvelteKit application. You can also use an already existing SvelteKit application. To create a new SvelteKit application, run the command npm create svelte at latest and the name of the app. We're going to be choosing the skeleton project template. Select your preferred options or just go with the defaults. And like that, we created a new SvelteKit application. Let's go inside and install the dependencies. For good measure, we're going to create a git repository and commit every file. Let's spin up our SvelteKit application to see if it works. Nice work! Let's open the project folder in our code editor. If we're going to be building an installable application, we're going to need some icons. I prepared some beforehand, but you can also get the zip file down below. Just put the icon files in your static folder. Next up, we're going to provide a web app manifest. Create a new file in the static folder called manifest.json. Create an object with the following properties. Name, short name, Start URL, which is going to be the URL that the app icon opens. Display, which sets the preferred display mode. Here we're going to set standalone to make the app look and feel like a standalone application. Theme color, background color, and an array that describes the icons. You can find this and any other code in the description below. Next, we're going to tell the browser where the app manifest is located. We can do that inside the head tag of our app.html file. Create a new link tag with the relation of manifest. Be sure to prepend the percent svelte.kit.assets percent so the browser will know the correct path. While we are here, we can also set a title for our application. We can also provide an SVG version of our fav icon. If we visit the application and open DevTools, go into the Applications tab inside the Manifest section, we can see how the browser interprets our manifest. We can also see the icons here. But it tells us that we do not have a matching service worker. To create a service worker, just create a new file in the source directory called service-worker.js, ts, or service-worker slash index.js or ts. We will stick to js for now. Now it tells us the app does not work offline, but the service worker is registered. SvelteKit takes care of the registering for us. Make sure to check the update on reload checkbox to make your life developing a bit easier. To test out how the app works in production, turn this off. If we tick the offline checkbox, we can also check how the app behaves offline. When we reload the app, we can see it's not working. When the browser is offline, it won't be able to request the network for the file it needs to start the web app. To fix this, we're going to be using Workbox Precaching to cache all the files we need to run the app on the first visit. When the browser goes offline, we can still serve the cached files and make our app usable without a network connection. Install Workbox Precaching as a development dependency. SvelteKit creates an easy way to get a list of every file we need to save locally thanks to the dollar service worker module. It exposes string arrays like build, files and pre-rendered that contain the names of files generated by Vite, the files inside the static assets folder like our images, and every pre-rendered page and endpoint your SvelteKit application has. It also exposes a string called version that we will use to track which version of the file we are caching, so we can serve the correct ones. We're going to create one list with all the files we need to save locally. Workbox Precaching expects our list to be an array of objects, so we will use map to create an object for each entry. Set the key URL to the string and set revision to the version from the dollar service worker module. And now just call precache and route from workbox precaching with the cache list. Because workbox precaching uses some dark magic called process env node env, we're going to have to define this in our vite config. Open the vite config.js file and add a key called define to the configuration object. This is an object where each key gets replaced by its value. Here we're going to replace process.env.nodeenv with the string production. It is also important to note that if your web app requires data from the network at runtime, you will need to explicitly handle it to provide a usable offline experience. If you want to learn more about different approaches we can use to provide data offline even at runtime, let me know in the comments below. In this guide, we will only provide the web app itself for offline use. We can use the pre-render page option to make these pages available offline. But this only works at build time. Since our start URL is going to be the root file, we will pre-render this route. We can pre-render this route easily by creating a new file called pluspage.js in the same directory as our pluspage.svelte. 
inside the file, just export const pre-render equals true. To test our app, we need to run the production version because SvelteKit doesn't pre-render the pages in dev mode. To run the production version, just run npm run build and npm run preview. And now we're done. Workbox is gonna pre-cache the files and also serve them when the browser requests. This makes our app work offline. You can also use this button to install the app in the operating system. A couple of useful buttons inside applications panel are inside service workers. You can press this button to unregister the current service worker. And under storage, you can use this button to clear the cache of the application. When updating your app, you can run into situations where you are seeing an old version of the web app because an old version of the service worker is still controlling the page and serving the web app using the stale cache. The new version of the service worker is loaded right away, but it will wait before taking control of the web application until every tab is closed. You can see it waiting in the service worker section of the applications tab of the dev tools. This is why clicking update on reload is useful. That was pretty simple, right? If you want to learn more about Svelte and SvelteKit, write it in the comments. Thank you for your time. I hope it was worthwhile.